Hi everyone, Cześć Tule. My name is Tenzin Gocha and I am a Tibetan refugee student studying at New York University. I am majoring in biology with a specialization on recombinant DNA technology. I'm a master's student. Uh, this video which I've uploaded uh, is on network motifs. It's an assignment on a course of systems biology um, supervised by Dr. Matthew Rockman. All right. Okay, so this is a word from Yuri Alon. Complex is perhaps the most common adjective used to describe biological phenomenon. In every cell, complex networks of interactions occur between thousands of metabolites, proteins and DNA. Every interaction is itself a complex stance between exquisitely shaped proteins designed to interface with each other if the conditions are right. And every protein looks like tangled strands of spaghetti festooned with atomic appendages. So, where is the simplicity? Uri Alon and his colleagues didn't mean to say that biology is simple. Um, the, the thematic content of this paragraph and the whole paper on simplicity in biology is to convey that if someone could, if someone could determine a pattern in, in a complex um, pool of anything, that would make a life a lot easier for the researchers. A very good analogy would be looking at a protein from a different view. From if you go from the, the base pairs of nucleotides forming a triplet codon, that's a pattern of three in a, in a pool of bases. And then when you have all the amino acids linked together to form a protein, so you tend to get some sort of patterns. Similarly, when you look at a quaternary structure of a protein or a tertiary structure, then if you can discern certain motifs in that structure, again that would make a lot of make um, the protein complex a lot of easier to to study and to analyze. Similarly, now this analogy can be taken further towards network analysis. In network, which looks something like this, a pictorial depiction, this is a bottom stick model of network analysis. Now, in such a mess of uh, data and and, and um, entities, if you can find certain patterns which would then accentuate the occurrence of a similar pattern in the whole network. What I mean is, if a pattern has more occurrence in a real network than in a random network, then that would mean that that pattern has a certain functional significance or maybe evolutionary significance. And any pattern which could be taken out from such a motif, from such a network, would be called as a motif. I'm sure it's not clear. So, the network motif which I'm going to talk about today is nothing but it's taken out by comparing two different networks. One would be a random network, which would be like a control, and one would be a test network, which would be the real network. And if you compare these two, and if you could find out the difference in occurrence of certain patterns, that would be the criteria or criterion to determine a network motif. Right, so in the whole presentation, I'm going to talk on how to define a network motif. What are the characters? And what are the different types of network motifs? What are the functional significance? What kind of functions do these networks um, look or they, they seem to um, exhibit? And certain school of thoughts which have different views on a network motifs and in some cases these are contradictory. So before I move forward, it's, let, let's clarify the basic terminologies of network motifs. Now just to, uh, for, the, for, for the record, the whole presentation will be talking mostly about transcriptional network. Although there are networks on, on like, um, for example, there will be networks on neural networks, there will be like World Wide Web internet networks, 
and many more. Uh, I'll be focusing on the transcription networks, which means I'll be talking more about how a transcription factor regulates a set of genes or how a transcription factor regulates an operon. So, in that context, the nodes or the points within the network would be your transcription factors, the proteins. These proteins would be connected to each other and that would form an edge. So, for example, now in this diagram, node number one has two edges, one from node number eight, one from node number two. And these are called as incoming edges, which means the incoming degree of node number one is two. Now these edges show the regulation of a protein on the gene or on the operon. Now, in this diagram, now node one has two incoming degrees and one outgoing degree to node number 16. When we have a lot of these edges, it comprises a whole network. Now this would be a network with how many edges? Okay, with 12 nodes and a certain number of edges. Now, if you look really carefully in such a network, now this is really simple, it's a it's simplistic, uh, it's a reductionist view of the network. In this uh, model, if you look carefully, you can make out that there are certain patterns which arise again and again. Okay, for example, this is one. The similar pattern is observed once, okay, twice, thrice, four times, and five times. So now this pattern which arises in such a number would be called as a motif or a subgraph. Now this, for instance, it is a subgraph of three nodes, node number 3, 12, and 13. This would be a subgraph or a motif with four nodes, node number 4, 10, 5, and 6. Now, as I told you before, so the proper definition would of network motif would be a pattern that occur in real network significantly more than in randomized networks which means now which would call us to then to define how do you create a randomized network a randomized network is created by taking into consideration each and every character of a real network which means the main character of network would be the number of nodes and the number of edges. So, if you look at one uh, one example from E. coli's transcription network, this real network has got ten nodes, okay, ten points, and fourteen edges. So there are fourteen links. This fourteen includes these four uh, self-regulatory edges. Now, if you want to create a randomized network of this similar network you have to take in consideration the same number of nodes, that's 10, and the same number of edges, and then and same number of self-edges as well. And that would let it create a network on its own on the basis of certain algorithm. This is done with the algorithm of E and R. So this is a randomized network now. And if you try to compare these two and try to find the significance of occurrence of certain patterns, that would lead us to certain network motifs. If I give another example, okay, now this is the same model which we looked at before with 12 nodes. Now in this example, they have shown five real motifs, one, two, one, two, three, four, and five. Now similar randomized network created with same number of nodes and edges are over here. So by calculation, they have shown that in the real network, there are five motifs. In the random, they are around 0.5 with a deviation of plus minus 0.6. So the occurrence of such a motif is usually uh, shown on either a scale of p-values or a z-score. So in this context, a z-score, higher the z-score, more prevalent the network motif in a real network. Hence, more significant it is. G score is, is you know, calculated by subtracting the number of motifs